the information you've all been waiting for. What happened to me as a result of eating 10,000 calories? Okay, good morning. Today is February 26th. It is the day after I did the 10K challenge. I'm on my way right now to do my whole body composition all over again. I'm currently fasted, which is very unfortunate because the day after the 10K, I'm really thirsty from not really drinking a ton of water during the challenge just so I didn't get too full. Uh, so after the test, I'll drink, but um, we're about to go check to see what has changed and I will check you when I get to the lab. As I said in the 10K challenge, this was part of an overfeeding study. So we're gonna go over the study design. And the study consisted of five days. Day three, which was the day I actually did the 10K. And day three happened to also be strategically planned on my birthday. I had the two days leading up to the 10K and the two days afterwards, I had consistent macros and I try to keep my training as consistent as possible. The day right before the 10K challenge, I had the following parameters measured. My body fat percentage, my total body water, including intracellular water and extracellular water, Water, my fasting blood glucose, and my resting metabolic rate. And then I had the same exact measurements read the following morning at 7 a.m. fasted, and then 48 hours after that. And I want to go over with you what my results are. Okay, so morning of the challenge. I showed you all those numbers in the 10K, but just to recap, I was 123.6 pounds. My percent body fat was 14.3. My fat mass was 17.6 pounds. My fasting blood glucose was 79 milligrams per deciliter. Total water in my body was 36.4 liters. 21.7 of those liters was intracellular and about 14.7 liters were extracellular. And my RMR was 1300 calories per day. All right, the day after the 10K, my knees and my ankles hurt really bad. <laughs> At the end of the night last night, I was 10 pounds heavier. <laughs> this morning, I was seven pounds up from my morning weight the day before. When you have like bad edema, like after shows, like this here bump isn't visible because it's all like water. But it probably is still just that. You can see, look at my, I don't know, you can evaluate my body right now. You know how different. Uh, tread carefully with this one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like sick. 129 on here? Yeah. That makes sense. That's pretty freaking good for the day after the post K, post 10K. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and just your physique, I mean. <laughs> See, is there a potato on the ground? <laughs> 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 that is <laughs> Oh, and another thing to note is your your skin is boiling hot. Oh yes, I'm like. It well, it was I, last night. Like I was like, it was like the like a fever. A substantial amount. Yeah, you feel that, warm. Is that I'm usually freezing like even my skin mm. to the touch is usually very cold i was 129 pounds the day after <laughs> six pounds up so my percent body fat because of the weight gain was only 15 percent but my fat mass was 19.4 pounds went up the two pounds so just in fat i gained two pounds your 15 percent body fat now your fat mass increased around like two pounds and then your lean body mass increased around four pounds four pounds of lean which is <laughs> Dang. Water. Not yeah. Water. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like I can feel the water. Two, like two pounds of fat is about in line with what I predicted in my video. Shut up, shut up my video. I feel like I need to like move. Okay, um, do you want to go to that? <laughs> is that how you do it? <laughs> I warm up. <laughs> is that really 26.5? Half an inch. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Fasting blood glucose went way up, even though I had slept all night and woke up and did this fasted, all the way up from 79 to 112. That's pre-diabetic. That's high. Oh, what was it before? 78 or wow. 79. I didn't I think it would change that much. That. Damn. <laughs> all that ice cream. <laughs> I figured since you're still fasting overnight, it wouldn't go up that much. Okay. Total water went from 36.4 liters to 38.5 liters. I had an extra two liters in my body. That's a lot of water. So two liters in this body 
that's a lot. Now I'm doing total percent total body water. Also tell me where the water is, whether it's intracellular, or extracellular, overall weight. Or okay, so that was the reason why. Is the verdict? Wait, wait. You're up two liters. <laughs> two liters. Yeah. That's lot. four of those <laughs> in that in this in my knees. <laughs> Sixteen point three so, so it's a liter and a half of extracellular water. That's crazy. Um, the other interesting part was only a, about a half a liter of those two liters of, of extra were um, intracellular. Over 1.5 liters was added extracellular water. And my RMR, so this is also very interesting. My RMR, the day before was, like I said, 1300, went up to 2100. <laughs> Do that again. Thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like when I'm breathing now, as compared to like how I was breathing when before I took it, I have to breathe like it sounded faster. So what was your mess resting metabolic rate yesterday? yesterday? So I had the first one we did it was like 12:46, and now it's 2100. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I literally felt feel like just to breathe is like. Yeah. Really, really high resting metabolic rate, which obviously makes sense because as a result of eating all of that food, my body had to digest it. And digesting so much food requires a lot of energy from your body. So it did increase my resting metabolic rate. It did return back to normal as I returned back to normal eating patterns two days after. Now, my weight actually went down to the weight that I was the day before I did the 10K. I don't want to put in my head that nothing happened as a result of this 10K because my percent body fat was actually higher. Of those two pounds that I gained, I held on to a pound of body fat. Okay. 123. That was what I was the day before. So the fat that I gained from the 10K challenge, I didn't lose that even though my weight went down, but mm -hmm. I lost all the water that I gained. Mm -hmm. Two days after, I didn't lose the fat yet. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh yeah, I'm back down kind to of- To the normal weight. <laughs> or, not, or like close to it, but like they didn't lose the fat that they put on. Right, right. Um, so moving on to fasting blood glucose. 48 hours later, it did return to normal. 73 milligrams per deciliter. My extracellular fluid, it did go down a liter. For the love of God, I didn't have two liters extra in my extracellular fluid. My RMR actually returned almost to baseline. It went down to 1400 calories per day. Okay, just removed that RMR mask and the reading for today, 1396, which is crazy because it went almost all the way back down. It is now March 10th. Welcome to time travel. You'll have seen the first two follow-ups. This is the last and final follow-up that I will be doing. I was traveling the past couple of weeks, so it's been about 13 days since I did the 10K challenge. Wanted to measure not only acute, but a little bit of a long-term. We will see what my body is looking like. I'll catch you in a second. So on this scale, I am 125 today. I'm up a little bit, and that could be a result of I didn't splurge in Ohio, but I, I don't I don't compete, so. <laughs> I was up a little bit in weight. My weight was 125. My percent body fat was 14.7. However, my fat mass was still 18.4, so I still have that extra pound of fat. I don't know if that extra pound is from the 10K or if I gained it eating in Ohio, but I still had 18.4 pounds of fat on my body. My fasting blood glucose was normal, 73 um, milligrams per deciliter, and my total water was down a bit. It was 36.9 liters. My resting metabolic rate, or my RMR, was actually 1,500. Those are the numbers, two weeks, which goes to show that it's possible that that extra pound of fat that I gained as a result of the 10K is from that 10K, extra pound of fat on me. A lot of things did go down and a lot of things did return back to normal, but the one thing that did not return back to normal completely. 48 hours after, I had kept um, an entire pound of fat and in that follow-up that I did that's two weeks after, I did still have all that fat mass. I don't wanna say that you can't put on weight as a result of just one overfeeding because you can. However, gaining a large amount of weight is just doing something like this where you're eating in a caloric surplus all the time because that fat will accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. It's not just from an acute insult like a 10,000 calorie challenge. It's that 
continuous eating over your maintenance amount of calories. That's all I have for you. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed all of the information. I would love to do more food challenges. It was so fun. I had such a blast doing it. So if you guys would like to see more food challenges from me, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Until next time, bye.